What is going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. My name is Robert and for those of you who have been following me for the past few months, you know that I've been installing a supercharger on my 370Z and today we are going to be talking about what is probably one of the most important topics of this entire DIY series and that is tuning. Over the next few videos I'm going to be working closely with Eugene Turkoff to bring you guys some valuable information about the tuning process. In the next video, I'm actually going to be doing a Q&A session with him on some of the different principles around tuning. What sort of parameters do you tune? What are some things that you can look for to ensure that your tune is safe and that your tuner didn't give you an unsafe tune that could possibly damage your car? So if you guys have any questions about the tuning process that you would like me to ask Eugene, leave a comment down below. Again, he is one of the most reputable tuners out there that tunes with EcuTech. So leave a comment down below with your questions or you can reach out to me on Instagram. Leave me a question for Eugene and then we'll try and answer everybody's questions in our Q&A video, which will be uploaded after this one. In this video, however, I'm just gonna be covering how to download and use the EcuTech software. I'm gonna be covering how to flash a tune to your car safely. We're also gonna be looking at how to collect data logs both through your laptop as well as through the EcuTech app on an Android device. Uh, data logging is something that's very important, especially when you're remote tuning, because you're gonna need to send these data logs to your tuner to be able to refine the tune. And it's also important that you know how to look at them yourself. So I'm gonna show you guys how through the EcuTech Tech Pro ECU tuning app, you can review your data logs. That way you can get comfortable with looking at the data from your car and ensuring that your vehicle is running safely. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. So in order to tune the car, we're gonna need two things. The first thing is we're gonna need a laptop. Now currently the EcuTech Pro ECU software, I believe is only supported by Windows. So you're gonna need a Windows machine. Um, also your laptop is going to need to have at least two USB ports. If you only have one USB port on your laptop, you can also use a USB hub, but you're gonna need two ports to be able to install the dongle as well as be able to use the USB cable that hooks up to the OBD2 interface. You're also gonna need this EcuTech kit which is gonna come with the license dongle as well as the OBD2 dongle that's gonna plug into the car and the USB cable that's gonna plug straight into your laptop. You can typically get this from most EcuTech tuners. So now let me go ahead and walk you guys through the process of installing the EcuTech Pro ECU software, which you're gonna to need to use to be able to flash your car. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our laptop. So we're gonna start off by going to EcuTech's website. You can just type in EcuTech download in your Google search bar. And then this should bring you to the correct URL, ecutech.com slash downloads. We're gonna be installing the Pro ECU software. You can select the EcuTech app downloader link, and this will download the executable that you're gonna to need to run to be able to install the Pro ECU software. Once the downloader setup is on, we're gonna to need to get a hold of our vehicle interface. That's that cable that I just showed you, as well as the license dongle. You're gonna to need to have both of these things to be able to install the software. We're gonna go ahead and click next. We'll go ahead and just leave all these check boxes as default. Select install if Windows gives you a security notification. Again, select install. At this point, we need to go ahead and plug in our OBD2 dongle. You don't need to plug the dongle into the car just yet. We just need to plug it into the laptop. That way the downloader can detect that the dongle is present. Once the dongle has been plugged in, we should be able to select next. At this point, we will need to insert the license dongle as well. You may not see this dongle in your list of drives, but that is okay. The dongle will still be present. You'll notice that we can now select next to move on to the next window. At this point, we're gonna select finish, so that way we can run the EcuTech app downloader. We'll select download now to begin to download the EcuTech Pro ECU software. Be sure to read the license agreement all the way through. There is some information in here about liability and other legal stuff that you'll need to know when tuning with EcuTech software. Agree to the terms and conditions. And then at this point, the software is gonna to begin to download. This may take several minutes to complete. Once this completes, you'll need to accept the license agreement once again. At this point, you may be asked to check for Pro ECU updates. Anytime the software asks you to do this, I highly recommend checking for updates. This way you're ensured to be running the latest version of the Pro ECU software. With the download successful, you can go ahead and close out the EcuTech application downloader and your download is complete. So that is how you install the EcuTech Pro ECU software onto your laptop. Now let me walk you guys through how to flash the tune that your remote tuner is gonna provide you. So to flash the car, we'll go ahead and open up the Pro ECU software again. Once again, check for updates if you're prompted to. 
while we're waiting your ROM files are typically going to look something like this they're a dot binary file that your tuner is going to provide in this case I'm going to be flashing the latest 4.202 version of my supercharger tune which Eugene has provided to me with the ProECU software open, you're going to get this simple toolbar here. These two rectangles on the right should be green, indicating that it is communicating successfully with the OBD2 dongle. If these are red, then you're going to need to plug your dongle in. Once these rectangles are showing green, we're going to go over to Tools. And if you try to detect vehicle at this point, you're going to notice that it's going to go through the list of supported manufacturers and then it is going to fail out when it tries to detect the vehicle. In order to detect the vehicle, we're going to need to install the OBD2 dongle into the car. The port for this is going to be under the passenger footwell. During this entire process, you also should keep your feet on the floorboards and away from the pedals. This is to ensure that you don't accidentally start the car during the tuning process. A couple of other things you're going to want to keep in mind. Make sure that your fan speed is off as well as your headlights. You want to make sure that both of these are off so we're not draining the battery. Double tap the start stop button to put the car's ignition switch into on mode without starting the car. And then a really important thing you're going to want to check is to make sure that your battery voltage is at least 12 volts. You want to ensure that your battery is fully charged throughout this entire tuning process because if the battery ends up dying in the middle of a flash, you could end up corrupting your tune and then breaking your ECU, which is really bad. So just keep an eye on your voltage throughout this entire tuning process. Now we should be able to go back to Tools, Detect Vehicle, and then it'll find our ECU. So in order to flash, we're going to go ahead and highlight Program Engine ECU, click OK. Now if you haven't flashed your car before, your tuner may need to see some of the ECU details. So if you click Query ECU, it's going to spit out a bunch of information related to the ECU, including your calibration ID and some other information here that they may need to see. So you can take a screenshot of this to send it to your tuner, or sometimes they'll ask you to simply just dump the details for Ecutech. This will give them a file that they'll then need to see to be able to create your base tune. If you already have your tune provided by the tuner, go ahead and select Choose ROM File, and then we're going to select that binary file. This is the tune provided from Eugene. You may want to verify that the selected ROM file here is the correct directory and the correct file that you are intending to flash to the car. And then we're going to select Program ECU. Once again, you're going to get the warning, make sure that your AC is turned off and your headlights are also in the off position as well. You want to make sure that you're in park if you have an automatic vehicle. And it's also recommended that you go ahead and turn on your caution lights. This is a recommendation from Eugene because on some models, if the ignition switch is in the on position for too long, the car will actually turn the vehicle off and this could interrupt the tune and corrupt the ECU. So it might be a good idea to go ahead and switch on your hazards as well during this process. We'll notice as it's beginning to flash the car, we're going to see it erasing certain blocks of the memory within the ECU, and then it's going to go and begin to program them as well. You'll be prompted to switch off the ignition, so tap the start stop button without putting your feet on the pedals. You'll wait for a few seconds, and then you'll be prompted to turn the ignition back on without starting the car. And then you'll also be prompted with the option to clear all of the DTCs. This is usually good practice to go ahead and do this after you flash the car. You'll then be asked once again to switch off the ignition and then switch it back on again. At this point, your car should be successfully flashed and your new tune should be on the vehicle. Flashing your car really is that simple. You just have to make sure that your battery is not at risk of dying while you're trying to do this. So make sure that you have your fans turned off, make sure your headlights are turned off, make sure that your battery is charged before you begin flashing your car. Now let me show you guys how to data log. This is a very important tool for you to have. You're going to need to collect data logs both for your remote tuner as well as for your own personal use just to verify that the car is running correctly. Now we can data log both on the laptop or on the Ecutech app. So let me show you how to do it on the laptop first. So in order to start data logging, go to the Pro ECU bar, click on Recent ROMs, and select the ROM that you most recently flashed to the vehicle. This will bring up a window where you can gain map access and begin data logging the information from your car. Now before we start data logging, we are going to have to go through here and select which parameters we want to view. So if we click on all parameters, we can scroll down and then we can select and deselect various parameters that we want to be able to log from the car. What parameters you should have selected here is going to depend largely on what you and your tuner want to see from the data logs. So talk with your tuner to understand what parameters are needed to be able to refine your tune. 
With the desired parameters selected, we'll go ahead and click Map Access. Now, if you've selected too many parameters to data log, you're gonna get a warning like this. If you have too many parameters, the car is not gonna be able to pull all of the data that it needs in a reasonable amount of time. So you're gonna need to reduce the number of parameters that you're logging to a reasonable number. Once you've done this, you should now successfully be able to click Map Access. And then you're gonna see this little green scrolling bar here surrounded by a red outline. This indicates that you are now pulling the car for information and you can see all the different parameters here on the right side column. We're gonna have the center column which shows what the current value is and then we've got a minimum and maximum value on the left and right side. If we now click on log to file, this information is gonna be constantly sent to a .csv file where you're gonna be able to view the data later on. The default location for these data files is gonna be stored in your C drive under Ecutech, Map Access Logs, and then you can see the latest one that we just data logged here. This is gonna be under the name of your ROM file, and then it's gonna have a date and time stamp for the data log as well. Depending on how you and your tuner want to share files, you're gonna to need to be able to copy this over so your tuner has access to it. When working with Eugene, we have agreed that we will be using Dropbox, so I've created a separate log directory here to be able to store all the data logs from this latest tune. So that is how to data log using your laptop. However, it's arguably more convenient for you to be able to data log using your phone, or in my case, I'm gonna be using the Android tablet that is installed in my dash. This way, it's gonna be a lot easier to take data logs on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't need to carry around a laptop with you and have the cable plugged in. You can just Bluetooth into the dongle and collect your data logs that way. So let me show you guys how to data log now using the app. So on your Android phone or tablet, let's go ahead and go to the Play Store, search for Ecutech, and you should find the ECU Connect app. Once you've finished downloading it, we'll click Open, and this is what the main interface is gonna look like for the Ecutech Connect app. Now let's go to Settings real quick. You'll wanna unplug the USB cable from your OBD2 dongle, then go to your Bluetooth settings and make sure you are connected to the dongle. Mine is labeled here as EVI D4 D2. If you're not on a phone, you may also wanna to connect to a wireless network to make sharing your data logs easier. I will actually be using Dropbox for this. We'll open up the ECU Connect app again. Now, before we begin the data log procedure, do yourself a favor and click the settings button in the top right corner. Go down to max file size, select this, and then change the max file size to none. If you don't do this, then you're only gonna be able to data log for a few minutes at a time. And if you're trying to record a lot of daily driving data for your tuner, this is gonna be rather inconvenient. So being able to have an unlimited file size is just gonna make it a lot easier. We'll click my car. And now it's gonna begin connecting to the OBD2 dongle, as well as begin initializing race ROM. And here's a list of different features available through the app. You can put the car into valet mode through the app itself. We can also use the DTC tool to clear DTCs, as well as there's a nifty little fuel pump application here to be able to enable and disable the fuel pump at will whenever you're testing your fueling. We'll go ahead and select data log. And here we can see that the app is currently reading the different parameters from the car. We will need to click on settings now and enable which of the parameters we actually care to see. And now we're ready to begin data logging by hitting start. And now the app will be able to write all of these parameters to a .csv. We'll go ahead and hit stop again. And now if we want to share our data log, we can go to my files, click on data logs, and we can see the data log that we just took. If we long press this, we'll now be given the option to share it. As I said, in my case, I am going to be using Dropbox. And I can simply share this with the log directory on the Dropbox that I'm sharing with my tuner. Now last, but certainly not least, I wanna show you guys how to review the data that we just took. A lot of people will just send their data logs off to the remote tuner and won't even bother looking at it themselves. However, I highly encourage you guys to get comfortable using the Pro ECU app to review your data logs. That way you can verify for yourself firsthand if your car is running well, as well as if you possibly have a bad tune from your tuner. So for that, we are gonna get on the laptop again and we are gonna pull up the Pro ECU app once more. So in order to review your data logs, go ahead and open up the Pro ECU tuner software. This time you don't need to have your OBD2 dongle connected. If these boxes are red, that's completely fine. Go to file, and then we are gonna go down to open log file. Now here you're gonna go and select the log that you want to review. I'm gonna be reviewing one of the logs that we had from the first flash that we had put on the car when the supercharger was installed. In this log, I actually did a pull towards the end of the data logging process. So we're gonna take a look at that 
So this is what the interface looks like when you are going to review your log. You've got some simple time graphs here to kind of show you each of the different parameters that you were logging. Uh, one of my favorites is the custom 2D graph because it just gives us a really nice view of the data. Um, you can also view the data in raw form in the data table. You've also got options for custom 3D graphing as well as viewing your maps and just a couple of other things in here. I typically like to stick with just the time graphs as well as the custom 2D graphs. These are the most simple and easy to understand. I'm going to go ahead and draw out the timeline here. By default, for some reason, it'll sometimes just show the first half of it. Um, but if you drag out this end time, you'll see the entire length of the data log session here. For the x-axis, it usually defaults to engine speed. However, you can also just select T for time, and it'll quickly swap back to time mode. And then we can kind of see this little spike here. This is the pull that I was doing towards the end of my data logging session. Now, I wanna go ahead and use this data log as a use case to show you guys just kinda of how powerful uh, reviewing data logs can be. So one of the things that we noticed when we did our first pull was that I was only hitting about 10 to 11 pounds of boost. Um, so it was difficult to understand why that was. It could have been a boost leak. Um, it may have been an issue with the supercharger belt slipping. Uh, but using this data log viewer, we can actually understand a little bit more what's going on. So one of the things you can do is you can open up the time graph section. You can drag across the portion of the data that you want to see. And then we're going to go ahead and narrow it in a little bit closer to this pull here. Um, I know that this is where I was doing the pull because the accelerator pedal is slammed all the way at full throttle, except for this one point where traction control knocked in. Um, as I said, I do get wheel spin in fourth gear. It's pretty crazy. Um, all right, so we've kind of narrowed it down to the portion of the data log that I want to review. We'll go back to custom 2D graphing. And I'm going to disable all these other values here except for manifold absolute pressure. So we're looking at right now on the x-axis is our time, so this is just the time where I was doing the pull. And then our y-axis now is the absolute manifold pressure in bar units. Um, so with bar, one unit is going to be your manifold pressure. Uh, roughly just depending on the conditions of the weather as well. But 1.0 is going to be your normal atmospheric pressure. This is the maxed manifold pressure that you would hit um, if you weren't boosted. Anything above this is going to be on boost. And so we can see that the boost begins to climb steadily, which is what we expect to see with the supercharger. It does dip down a little bit here simply due to the fact that the traction control had kicked in. But we also begin to climb as well right up until we get to about this portion. Now I'm still full throttle here and the revs are still climbing. In fact, we could actually go ahead and plot our engine speed as well. Go ahead and enable that. You can see that throughout this entire process, our engine speed is climbing, but the manifold pressure is not. In fact, it's beginning to level off here. And then we can see even though the engine speed is still increasing, we're seeing a steady decline in the manifold pressure. And this is a very good indication that there was belt slip. If it was a simple boost leak, we'd probably see a more straight line here. It wouldn't curve down like this, but as the engine speed began to climb, that belt was slipping more and more and we began to lose manifold pressure from the blower. This is just one example to show you guys how powerful and how useful viewing your own data logs can be. Um, without reviewing this data log, it would have been a lot more difficult to assess what was going on here. I probably would have assumed that it was boost leak and not related to the supercharger unit. Um, but yes, very important and very powerful tool to be able to use and understand uh, how to review your data logs here. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys another use case for reviewing your data logs. So now reviewing a data log from a different day where I was just doing some daily driving around town and wasn't doing any pulls at all. Um, we're going to go ahead and uncheck everything and we're going to look at our field trim short term. Now, while I was driving, there was no indication that anything at all was wrong with the car. Um, the car seemed to be, at least on the surface, running perfectly fine. Um, but I noticed something kind of peculiar when I was reviewing the logs. Um, so we noticed that whenever it's at idle, whenever our engine speed here is sitting at the bottom, when I'm just sitting at a light or in a parking lot or whatever, um, the fuel trims early on seem to be perfectly fine. When you're sitting at idle here, the short-term fuel trims that we're viewing here really shouldn't be moving around a whole lot. Uh, however, as I got later on in the data log, we noticed these fairly large oscillations in the fuel trim value. Uh, this is not good. The car shouldn't be constantly hunting fuel trims like this. It should be kind of leveling off to a certain point here, and it should just be idling fairly stable. Um, this is an indication that something was going wrong with the car. 
um, and it took quite a bit of reviewing the logs to try and understand what was going on here. Um, however, I did notice, if we look at our heated O2 sensors, uh, so this is just the voltage coming off of the rear O2 sensors. These are the ones that sit normally on the uh, downwind side of the catalytic converter. And we notice here that it's reading a constant voltage. And then when these heated O2 sensors become active as they get heated up and are beginning to get pulled by the car, um, we can see that that's when these field trim oscillations begin to happen. Um, so one thing that Eugene and I went ahead and did is we went and disabled the rear O2 sensors to see if this would possibly fix the problem. So now we're gonna go ahead and open up a log file that I took after our new tune with the O2 sensors disabled. We'll go ahead and plot our engine speed again along with our short-term fuel trims. And now we can see that that oscillation that had been occurring is no longer happening here. Um, so what had happened in this case was that the rear O2 sensors must have been getting pulled by the car um, to make fuel adjustments, but because I don't have a catalytic converter and uh, also because I have long tube headers which can uh, change the dynamics of the O2 sensors and the delay and how they're read, it was causing that sort of oscillation to occur and we're still trying to understand a little bit why that happened, um, but we do know it was related to the O2 sensors. You see now the O2 sensor is completely disabled, it's not even being read. Um, and it really is pretty much useless if you don't have a catalytic converter at this point. Um, so we were able to fix our fuel trim oscillation issue by going and disabling those rear O2 sensors. This is something that would not have been caught uh, if we weren't reviewing the data logs. Uh, most people, whenever they go to a tuner, they simply have their tuner go through, they make a tune for them, they flash the car, the car seems to be running fine, uh, and then it, they're pretty much just good to go. Um, a lot of people don't think to actually review the logs themselves or even ask their tuner if they can. Um, this is why it's really important to be able to learn how to review your own data logs. Um, you really don't want a tuner to miss something uh, or give you a bad tune and you not be able to catch that uh, by reviewing the data yourself. So I highly emphasize to everybody to get comfortable reviewing your data logs uh, because it can really help you catch problems with the car and it lets you verify that the car is running properly. I can't emphasize being able to review these data logs enough. And that is how you tune your car using the EcuTech software. I showed you guys how to flash a tune to your vehicle, as well as how to data log and how to review those data logs to see what's going on with your car. Being able to data log is such an important tool to have in your toolbox, not only if you're trying to go forced induction, but just in general, trying to understand how the car is performing, as well as being able to diagnose what is wrong with the car. Being able to data log this is such a useful tool to have in your toolbox. So thank you guys once again for watching. Like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I'll see you all in the next video. Later.